Time now to talk about one of the recurring conversations in the country, especially with regards to the ongoing security question that begs for answers as the most populous black nation remains inundated with security challenges, which is further undermining uh, the lives and livelihood of its people, as well as its economic growth and development. State policing has been an idea that has been floated for quite some time now, gaining traction across board. And recently, the governors on the platform of the People's Democratic Party during a courtesy visit or a, a visit to show empathy and sympathize with the people of Plateau State once again re echoed how there is uniformity uh, across board with regards to the governor's support for the creation of state police as a panacea to Nigeria's national security question. So on the program today, we're going to take a deeper dive into the conversation to understand the pros and cons to the idea of state police and whether or not it is going to be the silver bullet that helps Nigerians sleep better at night and allows also for businesses and livelihoods to thrive across the country. Join us virtually to add value to the conversation is security analyst and um, uh, director at the Center for Peace and Security Studies, Modibo Adama University in Yola. Professor Jude Momodo is joining us uh, this morning for more on this conversation. Prof, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on the program. Let's first of all get a sense of where you stand on the idea of state policing. Yeah or nay from your part? Hello, Prof. Okay, uh, it, it, it appears that, that um, we, we have a bit of a issue with the connection there. But uh, no, before we get back to uh, Professor Jude, Hello? let's play you an excerpt from the conversation uh, that, um, or perhaps the position of the PDP Governors Forum as put together by the Governor of Bauchisi, who is Chairman of the Forum, during that visit to Plateau State. His thoughts. There is no dissent between the governors at the subnational level that we need to get some decentralization of the security apparatus so that we can enhance good governance by having good state police. And again, that will give us the opportunity to engage the structured security agencies to train our youth and also make sure the rules of engagement are not abused. There is no extrajudicial killings and so on and so forth. We will work in tandem with the established practice, globally best known, rather than just be forced to be doing vigilante. Even as a vigilante, we are doing our best to make sure we involve the security agencies. Well, to put it uh, in a concise uh, form, he did say that the, there's... There's unity of purpose, as far as the governors are That's concerned. So There's consensus. Um, where do you stand on this whole idea of decentralization? Because there's a difference between decentralization and state policing, even though there, there are similarities there. Because uh, yeah. some are saying, listen, let's tweak what we have. Let's expand it in terms of scope, in terms of approach, in terms of structure, in terms of the command uh, setup, so that it can meet you know, and address the current challenges that we're facing as a country, but I don't know what your thoughts are. You know, um, the attitude of uh, state government over time in Nigeria has, has worsened this fear mm. Allo ar around um, allowing the state governor's um, power to control mm. um, any kind of security apparatus. We know how much they have rendered useless the local government yeah. uh, council. We know how much state assemblies have become toothless, completely toothless. The whole concept of watchdogs, uh, of checks and balances have been completely annihilated by, by these governors because they basically control revenue uh, and, and therefore every other thing is subsumed. Yeah. We know how much the, the um, what do you call them, the traditional uh, rulers have completely lost relevance because of the overwhelming yeah. uh, interference of state government. And so that has heightened fear about adding uh, control yeah. over a state security mm. apparatus, which which can be deployed uh, to to winch hunt political mm. perceived political mm. opponents rather than you know what they say about the... absolute power. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah so um, there is also that. But I think we have uh, Professor Jude back now, uh, even on a different platform. But we do have him join us via phone to uh, add value to the conversation. Prof, it's uh, finally good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us on Daybreak. I was asking the question where you stand 
on the idea of state policing as a panacea to addressing Nigeria's national security challenge. Uh, thank you so much for this question, and uh, let me also thank you for the opportunity uh, to have me from and um, speak on this uh, very important issue. Um, since friendship and about, I think I've been one of the advocates of uh, um, I think uh, uh, the security products run on local security teams. The ones in Zafra, as well as the local to Zafra, the ones in Klopis, the local to Zafra, the local to Zafra. And again, I feel like the practice we are part between friends and system. The point this we have today is to centralize police system. Centralize to the extent our security is controlled. Um, uh, it appears that um, we still have those uh, connection connectivity problems uh, getting through to Dr. Jude. We're going to work on that uh, so we can really have a proper conversation uh, on this whole idea of state police being the uh, stopgap or perhaps even the solution to Nigeria's unending uh, and ceaseless battle with uh, insecurity, which has become now a national debate. It used to be relegated to just, you know, dif the different uh, geopolitical zones at one point in time. It was the Niger Delta because of what's happening over there. The amnesty program came, no longer it became an issue. The Boko Haram insurgency came and it was all focused on the Northeast. Now, every single state, I mean, the Niger military has operations across the 36 states of the Federation. Absolutely. That in itself tells you about how overwhelming the challenge is and how the police in its current shape and form is incapable of, you know, addressing all of these gaps that we've seen uh, with, within the security architecture. You know, uh, I mean, the opening statement of Professor Jude, yeah, he talked about decentralization mm. and, and you asked that important question mm. um, when you took um, your introductory mm. remarks uh, about the clear difference between uh, the, pol the Nigerian police as a correct stand is yeah, decentralized. decentralized. Yeah, you, you have know? state commands, you have <laughs> divisional, uh, you know, yeah, police and, units. And, and, and all of that. But the question really is about response time. Mm. It's about uh, people on seeing an apparent danger and mm. having no capacity to do anything about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and that has been the question. So how then can we improve the turnaround time? How can we ensure that states that are faced with these obvious security challenges can begin to adapt their own personnel to the kind of challenges that they have in their locality, whether mm. it is in terms of training or arming uh, the police officers. These days you see police officers in rural communities patrol with, with, uh, with, what do you call them, with tear gas canisters. Yeah. You know, as if to say the mem members of the public do not understand that what yeah. you're holding is completely harmless. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then we have seen from some of the arrests that have been made, the caliber of, of weapons that are deployed by these insurgents. Mm. And if we are not w rising up to meet them at that level, if we are not improving uh, intelligence gathering, if you're not improving on counterinsurgency, yeah. then... We might as well just, you know, be late, late you know... Just, uh, and just, just wait waiting. for yeah, calamities exactly. to, to, to and, be and, and also, uh, while having this conversation, uh, a lot of people say, to be fair, we also have to talk about how grossly underfunded the Nigerian police Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Right? And when you talk about their operations, right. when you talk about their welfare, you know, we want to discourage police officers from taking bribes or collections, as someone said, uh, you know, uh, almost legitimizing the whole idea. We want to motivate them to give out their best because when it comes to security, they're laying, you know, their lives on the line. They're putting their lives on the line. That's right. Uh, you know, and that risk has to be worth it. And that speaks to the issue. If, if as a country, we are battling with a police force of about half a million mm. uh, to police over 200,000 people or mm. over, 200 uh, million. <laughs> yeah. over, over mm. 600 mm. Um, local government, mm. and, and, and the government cannot find extra money from its post as it stands, I'm talking about the federal government, then you mm. should allow the state government take some of this responsibility. I'm sure they will find other intelligent way of going. That's, that's the next question. Yeah. How many states can afford state police? Yeah, so what, if we find, for instance, the Lagos state gov government mm. raise, raises over, over 10 billion mm. in, in what they refer to as um, 
a security fund, yeah. uh, you know, where yeah. they get contributions from corporate Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, where I saw the last one from Otedola, from I think it was a billion, billion or two billion? Right, yes, a billion. And yeah. he's been yeah. doing that yeah. consistently for some years now. Yeah. If you get those kind of states to put those kind of funds, then whatever the government would need to augment would just be uh, something not very much or that would, would deep. Mm. Um, heavily into I, I think finances. Lagos is an ideal example, but however, we only have one Lagos <laughs> in this country. But, you know, you we can, can talk about maybe Kano to some extent, Rivers, uh, some of the Niger Delta states, you Abuja know. maybe. So if we, can, if we can reinforce the security arrangement in places like Lagos, Rivers, Kano, mm. Neduguri, mm. Mm. Ilori or Benin, mm. Mm. Uh, then, I mean, other states can see what happens. They may not be able to do it on a broader scale, mm. but if you could do that with 1,000 personnel, you would have gone a long way to support mm. the security architecture. Mm. So it's, it's really uh, quite uh, an incredible challenge that needs uh, to be solved, especially when you consider the devastating impact it has had on this country, the largest economy on the continent, uh, but of course, we're still grappling with Poverty, uh, food security is lurking around the corner, unemployment is high, and all of that could also be tied to insecurity because uh, investment, we always like to talk about FDIs, investment like security. That's Without right. security, you cannot guarantee investment, That's even right. at the local level. Uh, so let's uh, try again one more time to see if we can get our guests back online uh, to further the conversation. Professor Jude Momode is joining us from Yola. Uh, the Adama State Capital, and of course, he's the director of Center for Peace and Security Studies at Modibo Adama University, uh, and he's joined us to add value to the conversation. Uh, Prof, do we have Prof back on the line? Okay, uh, it, it does appear that the network is not on our side this morning, Absolutely. and that is why it's always uh, you know better to have a backup plan yeah. uh, to you know uh, the the arrangements. Um, Okay, uh, let's try again. Prof, uh, good morning once again. I hope uh, this uh, third time would be the charm and we'll be lucky enough to have... Uh, have we lost our connection again? Uh, okay, Prof, uh, please go ahead. You were saying yeah. something earlier before we got caught off. Yes. Um, I was saying that, um, that the best thing that we can do as a nation now is to decentralize our policing uh, system. Um, we cannot continue to live in denial. As I speak to you, there are so many states that have a, a similitude of state police. Uh, you can call it a vigilante. Just last week, Zafra State Government uh, inaugurated, uh, established a, a vigilante uh, structure for the state. And the idea that uh, that the state cannot afford it, uh, all of us know that, that uh, in every state, it is the government that provides logistics and even funding for the operation of the police. I know that well, in my own state, Adama State, yeah, the government of Adama State gives like uh, 150,000 uh, to divisional police station. That's even more than what the federal government gives to them. Every quarter, the government, federal government gives uh, the police uh, to manage uh, to manage uh, the uh, police station, 50,000 naira. So the state gives more than that. The, the, the state gives more than that. Now, the question of uh, funding, the positive funding, how how is uh, uh State getting money? How will they get money to fund the one thousand? Because they have the money. That's why they have they've established uh, vigilante st structure for the state. Right. So uh, prof, they will be taking prof, care yeah. of what of the welfare, yeah. the logistics, yeah. prof, and other prof, things. Prof, uh, uh, we cannot uh, continue to live in denial. Prof, uh, some have also said that well, I know that the state governors will abuse it. Mm. We need to legislate, pass a law that will not enable the state government to hijack it. The way to go now, imagine I was telling someone, I said, in, for Plateau State, the governor has continued to lament. The governor should set up, do the same thing that, what, that uh, in the southwest of Motekun they have done. The same thing that what the governor of Zafra State has done. In Plateau State, if the governor, governor will set up a vigilante structure of about 1,000 people and, what, and buy a uh, firearm for them, even if it's pump action, I'm telling you that, that the kind of violence, killings we are seeing in places that will reduce. So the way to go is what is for us to come up with what the idea of a state police. Let every state, every state must have their own policing uh, system so that they can what they can take care of their funding, provide logistics for them. The federal government, the federal, the current police is not even properly funded by the by the federal government. Now imagine a situation whereby you send somebody from Abia State to Adama State to come and police Adama State. What does he know about it, the state? 
the terrain, what does he know about the terrain? So that's why it's important that, that we set up state police structure for every state. Thank God, most of the governors that are, that are advocating for post, uh, state police that were those that were against it, have been issued. But today now they have not seen the light that the way to go is for us to have a state police. Look at what happened in uh, Ekiti State, the killing in Ekiti State. He took the police and what and the vigilante that are on task to get them within three days, we were able to fish out the killers of the two traditional rulers. Mm. Look at efficiency. So um, <clears throat> state police is the way to go. Whether right. we like it or not, right. we'll get to Both. a point where mm. we must opt for state police. I'm happy that, that governors are now what I have not seen the light. They are now advocating for state police. So the way to go now is for the president to put his foot down and what and ensure that, that we rethink our law and what and give opportunity to the to the state what to set up their own state police. When you talked about made mention about uh, the Lagos State. Go to Lagos State. Now Lagos State used to be used to have uh, incidences of what of courtism and uh, bank robbery. But today because of uh, the, the state uh stru the structure they have the neighborhood watch they have today. Th those things have become a uh, thing of the past. Right. Uh, Prof, I, I so wanted I to ask you a question around, I mean, you've been on the ground, you've had um, interactions with uh, some of these um, non-state actors in their contribution to addressing the insecurity um, in the country, in different parts of the country. And some would say, listen, funding a vigilante setup or formation is a lot more cheaper than funding a state run uh, entity like the police for instance because the structures that you need to put in place the armament itself uh you know is going to cost you a lot but what is your idea around how we get around doing that because it is one thing to say states like lagos kano kaduna uh rivers um some of the other uh, economically viable states are able to do it uh, how do we do it across board in a very effective and efficient way plus what do we do about you know, duplication of responsibilities. How would a state police run concurrently with a federal police if that is uh, the case that we have to deal with in the near future? And don't you see, um, you know, some sort of um, uh, clash there with regards to all of the things that we need to put in place to make sure that they're working on the same page and towards the common goal? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, let me start uh, by using Amotekun as a model. Uh, Amotekun, that's the Western uh, uh, the Security Network uh, for the Southwest. Um, any state that wants to form, set up a state uh, uh, police structure, they should go and uh, take a cue or borrow from the law, the legislation that, that uh, uh, brought Amotekun uh, uh, to, to, to life. So, the law will clearly spell out the qualities, the criteria for recruitment, and the funding. The funding for 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 the, 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 the personnel and also the logistics. As I, I was saying the other time, as we are speaking now, the logistics. If I eighty percent of logistics that that the police, the current police structure use, is provided by the state government, the state governors. So. It is not uh, something that, that is uh, too expensive. It's not a rocket science. It's not a rocket science. Uh, the other, um, just last week, um, uh, a, a, a military personnel came out and said that the salary is 50,000 naira. So if the state government will set, will set up a police and pay them 50,000 naira, I don't think that is too small. So the question of uh, whether it is uh, expensive, uh, I don't think it's neither here, here nor there. You, you know, it's not, either near, uh, here nor there. So. Um, this issue of salary, I think, uh, is something that, that the state government can take care of. And again, the federal government can also come to their aid, to come to their aid by providing, by increasing what the allocation that goes to the state, so that uh, the state can also get, have some, some money to be able to take care of uh, the funding of state police. And again, it's not even out of place for, for the state government to even come up with a law for people to uh, to pay police tax. Mm. Uh, police tax, even if it's 500, uh, that will go a long way. Uh, in uh, helping to, uh, to cushion uh, the funding for the police. Then uh, the other issue that you talked about, that uh, uh, wouldn't there be conflict between the federal police and state police? There may be, even in the U.S., where you have what uh, the federal police are, what, and state police and the county police, sometimes they have what uh, they have uh, clashes, intelligence, uh, rivalry, but that can also what uh, be addressed by, by the legislation, the kind of legislation that you put in place. But again, I think the legislation, the law can, can spell out what the role 
based on what jurisdiction. You understand? The state government know that what they cannot any case that what that uh, any uh, case that what that uh, goes beyond their boundary. They know that what that is left over for the federal police. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think uh, there will be confusion if we can what they can come up with the right laws. They put in place the right laws that will enable us to have the, a police that will know its honours, that will know its own and be able to, to also know that that they have a task that must be done within their states. All right, Prof. Uh, now that we seem to be having more and more voices, you know, conversing for state police, especially amongst uh, the governors, um, especially those who hitherto uh, were against um, state policing, what do you think is the practical next step uh, for us? Because it does appear that the, the, the elements in the federal government uh, uh, do not align with the whole concept, including the Nigerian police. They don't seem to give in to uh, this conversation. What do we need to do to move away from just agitating for this and start taking practical steps to, uh, you know, actualize the whole idea of state policing? <laughs> Hello? Yes, please go ahead, Prof. Hello? Prof, can you please go ahead? Where are now? It's um it's a bit of um uh, so I see, yeah. I'll say uh, and 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 he's, and he's he, Listen, we, we always talk about efficiency, and I feel like in the telecoms industry, uh, people are not getting value for their money because this is not supposed to be happening. I mean, uh, with all the uh, monies and... Yeah, exactly. With the whole talk about 5G. Yeah. <laughs> The rollout itself uh, has been uh, somewhat of a controversy. But, 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 but do you think, to Prof's point, for instance, especially this idea of police task? I mean, task. That was, that's a new one for yeah, me. Yeah, a new uh, one. But, but, but around... We do this, uh, mm. you know, uh, informally mm. with, with all the places. I, I just came mm. out from a meeting mm. in, in my small community where we've all mm. been taxed a certain mm. amount to increase the number mm. of... Um, I think... I think uh, all right, we understand that Prof is back. Um, prof? If you can hear yes. me, can you please uh, finish your thoughts on the last question? Yes, the last question. Uh, how do we go about uh, uh, making sure that, that uh, we bring to fruition the idea of a state police so that the state can be allowed to have their own police? Um, I'm happy that, uh, that the PD, governor, PD governors are now what, advocating for uh, state police. Now, they must go beyond just a meeting and, what, and saying that want state police. They should have a meeting with, uh, with the members of national assembly within their states and let them also watch also be on the same page with them so that when they go back to national assembly they will also what see how to what to pass and make a law already there's a uh, uh, the senator uh, uh, Madu's, uh bill on state police and i think they should go and pick that bill and dust it and see how they can what um insert uh, uh, things that will, that will make it uh, to be uh, to, for us to have a police that, that is practicable by state and also able to address our local security challenges. Mm. Then, again, I think uh, the PDP governor should also reach out to, uh, to the APC governor so that they can also bring them on the same page as the, uh, uh, on the same page with them. Then they can now, the governors can now push for a state police, go and see the president uh, and try to, uh, to see, let the president know that, that they also need their own police. Mm. By the time they what they take this concerted effort from the National Assembly and what and also engage with the president, I'm sure that what all of them will be on the same page. And by the time we know it, before between now and the end of the year, we, uh, the National Assembly will be able to pass a law uh, that would help uh, the states to have their own uh, state police. That's mm. where we know that we have what uniform pro procedure, uniform law that will that enable us to have a state police that would, that is standardized, that is not, uh, that standardized. Mm -hmm. You know that what, if you have a state police in Zafara and you have in other state, they, are this, they have a law that, that is, uh, that, uh, is, uh, that they are using to, uh, to uh, establish and also to operate the state law. And I think that's the way to go. Right. They should not just what, uh, arise from the meeting they have had. They should also engage with the National Assembly members from their states to also push that, uh, push the same uh, advocacy to National Assembly and also engage with the with Mr. President and other APC governors, so that once they have that unit, this unity of purpose, I'm sure that uh, 
we will be able to have uh, the states will be able to have their own state police. Right. As I said, that's the way to go. We must not come to live in Benin. As I speak to you, we already have one. We have similitude of our state police across. In fact, in all the Tashi states, because there's no state you go to that you don't find the state government using Vidante or whether it's like Joint Task Force, whether it's uh, the Israel police in uh, in Sokoto State or the Amoteku in the Southwest or the Bubragu in the Southeast. So we have what we have. Something that would actually resemble state police, but what we must do is, what, is to have a law that will help in standardizing this different structure we have so that we have uniform state police for the state that will be funded by the state. As I said, 70% of what of the funding of the federal police in various states what, is provided by the governors. Right, okay. By the governors. Yeah. Prof, um, uh, let's, let me get your take on what uh, the recommendations would be uh, are we looking forward to collapsing the federal police into state police because we have uh, a little shy over 400,000 or just a little uh, close to that uh, 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 amount uh, in, uh, in the police uh, force right now uh, in the country are you recommending a gradual uh, collapsing of that into state structure because I reckon that if you know the states get a chance to create their own state police the numbers are also going to be significant and we might end up having uh, to deal with a surplus plus for some people the governors have over the past two decades and counting have had hundreds of millions of naira allocated to them on a monthly basis as security vote and it's fair to say that most if not all of them have not given a good account of that security vote so if we cannot trust them with just security vote to help finance and uh, you know boost uh, the security situation in their states, how can we trust them with a powerful police force that is available to them at their beck and call? Isn't that just um, you know going to further aggravate uh, the situation, especially as we look at you know political uh, you know uh, back and forth within the political parties or between political rivals? Hello, hello, Prof. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we, we're having to deal with this uh, over and over again. But that's uh, one of those questions that um, continues to simmer in the conversation around it. I mean, have the governors given good account of the hundreds of millions and billions of naira that they get monthly as security vote? Because mm -hmm. for the most part, we don't see them do anything with it. Absolutely. Just complain. And um, that is also a part of the question, isn't it? That's right. Mm. Uh, you know, and to think that they have the liberty to deploy their funds in any manner yeah. uh, that they want, it's, it's one, you know, that raises a lot of questions. And it does appear that those who even get more of the security would operate in areas where we have seen... Yeah, uh, a spike. A spike. <laughs> exactly, know, in the insecurity. In the insecurity. In the area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, um, unfortunately, uh, these are some of the questions that are begging for answers. And, and with regards to the whole vigilante set what happens to it if we end up having, uh, you know, state police? How do you demobilize safely? Because, yeah. you know, the experience that they've had over the years to just sideline them would be counterproductive because we've seen that backfire in so many uh, instances uh, across the globe where, you know, people feel used and dumped. Uh, we're even talking about political thugs who have nothing to do after the political or election circle is over. They get into banditry, they get into crimes uh, of all kinds armed robbery, uh, cultism, uh, and the like. So we're going to work a little bit harder to uh, get Dr. Jude, uh, Professor Jude back uh, so we can uh, finish up our conversation uh, today. It is a very important one. And um, just recently, I think it was 2017 or 2018, the NOI polls conducted a survey and over 60% of Nigerians are overwhelmingly in support uh, of, of state police. So it's safe to say that it's a popular idea yes, uh, for the most part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think we have Prof back on, so let's uh, try again, try our luck. Hopefully, uh, we get a, a smooth conversation this time around. Prof, the question was uh, Have we seen enough evidence to show that the governors have been responsible with the security votes they're getting on a monthly basis? And are you suggesting a gradual collapse or transformation of the federal police into a state structure going forward? Hello, Prof. Okay. 
uh, I think um, we, we have run out of luck uh, as far as, far as uh, you know, yeah. So uh, let's not, uh, you know, Michelle, raise your expectations uh, any further and perhaps we will circle back to this conversation I think, uh, some um, other time. I uh, think Prof has more than mm. made the point yeah. about how expedient this is now and he's also suggested innovative ways of finding the funds to drive this process. Mm. Uh, we hope that... I'm not particularly the excited the about the whole tax idea. I yeah. mean, I get it, but... I mean, we. however you look at it, we are already... Are we not tax taxes. enough already? Well, we are, we are, and that's happening. Probably what we have to mm. do is to take it from one post yeah. uh, to another mm. with a different... I think there's a, there's a... What was it? Is it police uh, equipment uh, trust yes, fund or something? Fund yeah, yeah. yeah that which, which is like we can pull from, from? Corporate, mm. the corporate Nigeria. Mm. Mm. There's so much we can do. And we can also attract international funding, mm. whether it is direct funding or providing uh, training or expertise mm. to yeah. some of this. And at a time mm. when most of this policing is becoming tech based mm. rather than, yeah. you know, there's a lot of innovation in that space. Approach and all Drone technology has happened and, and, a lot. And we've got the surveillance technology, the yeah. you know, to mm. drive that process if we are interested mm. in innovating along that direction. I think we're also, you know, moving in that direction where states are, even with the, the last few legislations before the Buhari administration uh, came to an end, uh, a lot more control over state resources, look at what we're doing with the past sector, yeah. generation, distribution, and, and things like that. So I think this is the next step. If you're giving them, if, you're, if we're apparently in agreement that the state needs to take a lot more of the responsibilities, security is top. Uh, three, as far as responsibility is concerned. Right. So it, we go beyond just calling the governors chief security officers, but we actually make them chief security chief officers Jesus. of the state by giving them the necessary tools that they need, uh, even though we have reservations about how well they're going to do. I think we can all agree that what we have right now is it's not working. working. Uh, so why keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result?